Did you know that after a liver transplant surgery, both the transplanted liver and the remaining portion of the donor's liver have the remarkable ability to grow and regenerate, gradually restoring the organ to its full size and functional capacity? Well, we are here to acknowledge some of the most common questions people have about liver transplants. For this, we have the expert team from Medanta's Institute of Liver Transplantation and Regenerative Medicine. So doctors, welcome to the liver show. Thank you so much for being here. I am super excited because this is a conversation that so many people have been waiting to hear. Thank you for making time from your busy schedules. And I'm just quickly going to pop into the questions that I want to ask. So there are a lot of questions circling around liver transplants, liver health. Dr. Neelam, why would children at very young ages need a transplant? The One of the common causes that children need, babies need transplant is biliary atresia. By birth, they are lacking the bile duct which supplies the bile from the liver to the intestine. Besides that, there are other metabolic conditions where there is a genetic defect, an enzymatic defect and they are not able to perform the function. So, can you identify a child like that when he's born or does it take a little time to sort yes. of get to understand Yes, interestingly, that? actually this should be diagnosed very early in life. Okay. Within the first two weeks, the dictum is if the baby is passing dark urine and the diaper color is getting stained yellow, that is the time the parents should understand that dark urine with or without light colored stool, you need to immediately visit a liver specialist because unless proved otherwise, this is a cholestatic disorder where you need to rule out biliary atresia. If identified early, we can do a bypass surgery, which is called a Kasai operation. So dark urine and light colored stools, is that what you mentioned? Along with jaundice. So parents, dark urine, light colored stools and a jaundiced baby, which means a slightly yellow baby. That should be something that you need to keep in mind when visiting a liver transplant specialist. Dr. Saraf, how do you decide when someone you are treating for liver disease needs an actual transplant? Like, are there specific symptoms or does a patient or their general physician need to know that this is when I need to go to a liver transplant specialist? That's an excellent question, Siddhant, because I think that's the crux of referring a patient at the right time yes. for the liver transplant. So you're absolutely right. All liver patients don't need a transplant. So patients who have liver cirrhosis and not only just cirrhosis, who get complications of cirrhosis like jaundice or uh, a fluid in the belly, which is called as ascites, or when their ammonia goes up and they become drowsy or they start talking irrelevantly and sometimes even go into coma. So these are some of the symptoms when uh, these patients should be referred to us. Understood. Thank you so much, Dr. Saraf. Uh, now, this is a query that I've had ever since I was a child. I think it's a super common query, which is, where does the donor liver for a liver transplant come from? Dr. Bhangi, can you please help me with this? Thanks, Siddhan. Uh, yeah, it's a thing that everyone always wonders. We just have one liver. So where would that liver yeah. come from? So broadly, there are two types of liver transplantations. One is a living donor liver transplantation, where a healthy liver donor would donate a part of his liver to the one who needs it really badly. Can you clarify what healthy means here? So generally speaking, we would think of an 18 to 55 year old lady or man who would be able to donate a part of his liver being healthy as in the liver should not be fatty. Okay. And the amount of liver that he is donating to the recipient should be of a particular amount, which is required by the recipient according to his body weight. And what remains with him should also be sufficient for him to carry on his liver function as of now, at the time that he is donating the liver, ultimately, as you said right in the beginning, that liver is going to regenerate mm. and it's going to grow to its full size and the full capacity as it was before he actually donated the part of his liver. Understood. So this is the live liver donor. Uh, what is the other kinds or are there any other kinds? Yes, of course. Uh, what has been there for a long period of time and how liver transplantation actually started with disease donor liver transplantation, or sometimes also referred to as cadaveric liver transplantation. Mm. So this is where, unfortunately, there is someone who is brain dead, declared as brain dead, but the other organs like the liver, the kidney, the heart, they are all functioning mm. normally. So if he had already decided, he or she had already decided to do a noble deed of donating his or her organs after death, 
or if the family members decide at that point of time that they want to go ahead with organ donation, those organs can be retrieved from this okay. disease donor. And then in the case of a liver, the whole liver or sometimes split into two can be given to one or to two recipients. Moving on to the last question, and I think this encompasses this entire conversation. So Dr. Soin, we discussed the, the why, the how, the when. Can you please tell us where should a person go if they have to move on to a liver transplant? Because there are multiple hospitals offering these liver transplantation services. How do you pick the right one? That's an excellent question, Siddharth. Uh, of course, there are many hospitals offering liver transplantation. What would I look for if I or my loved one needed a liver transplant? I would look for a hospital with excellent infrastructure, of course. But mainly, I would look for a very experienced team that has done a large number of liver transplants. And the team should be multidisciplinary, which means experienced liver surgeon, experienced hepatologist, intensive care specialist, anesthetist, and not just these. You need supporting specialties like cardiology, neurology, radiology, interventional radiology, and so on. Nephrology for dialysis. So all these are necessary to make every single liver transplant successful. Mm -hmm. And that's what I would look for in a hospital. I would look for a hospital and a team that has done a large number of cases. Like we at Medanta Liver Transplant Institute have done 4,000 plus liver transplants, which means we've been through a whole gamut of complex cases, all ages, all causes, and we've dealt with possible complications. So that's the kind of team we want to go to. And finally, the transplant job does not get over with just the surgery. It's a lifelong commitment yeah. that the liver team has to have to the patient. They have to be followed up for life. Absolutely. We have patients we transplanted 20, 25 years ago that are still following up with us. Yeah. So we have a complete follow up on every single patient that we have transplanted so far. Thank you, Dr. Sohin, for this thorough answer. I think you well encapsulated everything. And this is definitely going to make people choose the correct hospitals when going in for a liver transplant surgery. Thank you so much for that. We hope our in-depth conversation today around liver transplants was helpful. We want you to be healthy always. So see you in the next episode of The Liver Show. Till then, please take good care of yourself and your loved ones.